Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Today we will learn about UML use case. Before that, what the heck is UML? UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. Now what is modeling language? As Wikipedia says, a modeling language is any artificial language that can be used to express information or knowledge or systems in a structure that is defined by a consistent set of rules. The rules are used for interpretation of the meaning of components in the structure. Few. Understood? Or as clear as mud? Chuck it. Don't bother yourself with these definitions. It's much easier to simply go ahead, explain and see some examples. Okay? YAML, it's a modeling language, but done through graphical notation. It is used to specify, visualize and construct and document the artifacts of a software system. It's a communication tool between two parties. Typically it could be between the, the requirements guy and the architect or the architect and the, the engineering team like that. YAML does not guarantee a well-designed system. It's only meant for a well representation of the system and many a times it's only the part of a system, not the entire system. There are different types of UML diagrams. For now, we will learn about use case diagram, which is about requirements. Through use case diagrams, we express the primary form of requirements, the ones that are architecturally and or business-wise significant. We don't express non-functional and other secondary requirements through UML use case diagrams. It may also capture ASRs if they are related to business or functional requirements. As we already know by now, requirements express the what and not the how. Therefore, use case diagrams too don't express the how. It outlines from a user's point of view a system's behavior as it responds to a request. Each use case is represented as a sequence of simple steps beginning with the user's goal and ending when the goal is fulfilled. You will understand it more clearly when you see an example. Use case diagrams are simple. They don't include unnecessary details Focus on the key aspect of the business process. Therefore, use case diagrams give an outline of the core of a business functionality than the entire business functionality. It's all about the various relationships or associations between different use cases, actors and systems. We'll soon learn about actors. Use case diagrams don't show the exact order. It is just a diagram of relationships. So this is a typical use case diagram. On both sides of the diagram, there are actors. As you can see, the left side actor is a human being and the right side actor is a third party payment gateway, not a human. The oval shapes are what we call different use cases. These are the ones the actors have relationships or associations with. If you notice that the search product use case is associated with add to cart use case and there is no direct line that shows the customer is associated with add to cart. Why is that? Because he can add to cart only after a search. Does it mean that we are here talk, we are talking about a flow, a sequence? Yes, but only a little bit. Just to highlight the fact that add to cart use case cannot be triggered unless search is performed. One important thing to note here is the background rectangle, which is marked as boundary. This tells us these are the use cases that are in the scope of software development. If there is anything out of scope, that should be outside this box. For example, the payment gateway. Let's now have a look at another example. A food delivery app, something which we are pretty familiar with. As we all know, these are the most common features of a generic food delivery app. There is typically a mobile app, there is some back-end data process happens and then some delivery happens. At high level, we can search by restaurants, cuisines, see menu, add items to cart, place order, 
track order and at the optionally post some review comments. I mentioned about actors, in this case these people are the actors, though there may be more. All actors have goals, they are here with a purpose, they are about to do something, they are the users of the system. Actors don't mean that they are necessarily human beings. Even systems, external systems can be actors. In the above, the payment merchant or financial institution which authenticates and validates payment is also an actor. An actor plays a type of role. What it means is that the same actor in the same system can assume different roles if the system permits. Just arbitrarily saying, what is stopping a delivery boy placing a food order in the same system? In that case, he assumes the role of a customer. He is the same user but because of two different roles, from human point of view, he personifies two actors. As mentioned earlier, an actor is external to the system. Interestingly, it may not be even a physical object or a living being. It can simply be some stimuli like light, sound. While in real world, an actor can talk to another actor, but in the context of a system, an actor cannot directly communicate with another actor. However, if the system allows, they may communicate through, for example, an in-system chat module. Actors may sometimes be categorized as primary, secondary actors, just to highlight the main actors. Now, going back to the system, we'll analyze some behaviors. Behaviors impact the actions that a system does. Typically, in a food delivery app, a customer can register, log in, search, select, etc. and eventually place an order. In response to these behaviors, the system performs certain functions and keeps the customer info notified through by displaying appropriate messages on the screen or otherwise. Now from a human point of view, we call them scenarios. A scenario is nothing but a sequence of actions and interactions between the actor and the system. Before we start working on human use case diagrams, we need to ask about the actors, the typical scenarios and what are the goals of these scenarios. We need to ensure that we are not trying to make it a very sophisticated detailed diagram. We just need to understand from the diagram what is it that a specific actor is trying to achieve in this scenario. Never forget that a collection of use case diagrams is not a feature or a feature list. It captures only certain key scenarios or perhaps only the primary actors to answer one question. What is the expected behavior of the system or what does the actor want from the system? Sometimes the actor goal list like this helps to further clarify the needs. The priority of these goals come from the customer and usually these priorities guide us nicely for which we need to create use case diagrams. Usually the ones with higher priorities but may not be all with priority number one. How to find use cases? Know what you are building, that's the scope. Know what you are not building, that's out of scope. Know the users of the systems because whatever you are building, they are the ones who are going to use it. So always wear a customer centric attitude. Then identify the actors and then their expected actions and the interactions with the system. By now you will have enough information to start working on use case diagrams. Start with an actor goal list. Do not complicate diagrams by including multiple scenarios in one diagram. One example scenario is shown here. Note these spatial markings, extends, includes. Extend is used when a use case adds steps to another first class use case. Note that the view card can exist on its own because an user can view a card even without a checkout action. Include is used to extract use case fragments that are duplicated in multiple use cases. The included use cases cannot stand alone and the original use cases is not complete without the included one. The original use case, checkout, use case in this case is incomplete without the included pay use case. Before we end, let's have a quick test. 
Are these all valid use cases? Pause this video here and think for a while. Yes, they can be at different level, boundaries, actors, goals. Remember those earlier tips. Is it for primary user? Does it have a higher priority from the point of the business point of view? The question is, what is the level of focus we want to project through this use case diagram? I think by now you are pretty familiar with the concept of EML use case diagrams. Keep practicing and it will start becoming easier. In the next class, we shall focus on user stories. Please do subscribe, like, share if you are benefiting from these sessions. Thank you so much.